Do you like anvils? Do you hate it when they break? Do you wish you could replace them automatically? Do you hate being asked rapid fire questions like I'm doing right now? Then do I have the solution for you? Introducing the all new, definitely not re-uploaded, Anvil Boinginator 9000 for all your Anvil trampolining needs. It's got auto detection, Anvil storage, slime blocks, and a flat top so you can't even tell it's there. So where can I buy one you ask? Well, unfortunately it's not for sale, but you can build your own by following our tutorial right after this quick explanation. Here's how it works. To detect when the anvil breaks, we need to exploit the fact that anvils are removable when stationary, but movable when they're falling. So underneath the floor, there's a sticky piston being constantly spammed by an observer clock, so that the instant the anvil breaks, the piston will be able to push upwards. This piston then triggers an observer, which powers something called a gnaw latch, which may sound fancy, but in reality, it's just two droppers facing into each other. This is important because we only need one pulse, but the observer is going to produce much more than that, which would break the contraption. Using a gnaw latch is just the simplest and easiest way to filter out the excess pulses. The latch then turns off the observer clock and unpowers this falling edge monostable. This then gives a three tick pulse to this circuit here, which pulls away the floor and moves it out the way, so there's a clear one by one hole. At the same time, these pistons pull up to trigger another falling edge monostable. This briefly retracts this piston to load an anvil onto the slime blocks, ready to be bounced upwards. Once the anvil is above the floor, we send a three tick pulse to this circuit again to put the floor back. And finally, this torch powers the bottom dropper to reset the gnaw latch back to its default state, which turns the observer clock back on and resets the entire contraption, ready for another anvil to break. So to build this, we are going to need the following resources. So we need 13 sticky pistons, 2 regular pistons, 12 redstone dust, 7 repeaters, 3 redstone torches, 9 observers, 3 note blocks, 2 slime blocks, these can't be honey blocks because they do not bounce the anvils, 2 redstone blocks, 2 obsidian or 2 furnaces, it doesn't matter which you use, 1 hopper, 1 redstone comparator, and one target block. The area you need to dig is five blocks wide, three blocks long, and 11 blocks deep. So there are 10 blocks between the bottom of your trench and where your floor level is. We start off by placing a redstone block in the middle of the back row like this. Then we place a block here with a repeater on it facing out of the redstone block, and then a block in front. This block will be moved by a piston later but for the sake of building the contraption, it needs to be here for the time being. Next, we place a block here with redstone dust on top and a torch on the side. This will then have a regular piston facing to the left. Next, we place a block on the side of this repeater, then obsidian here with a two tick repeater facing this way. Then on the end of that, we place an obsidian with redstone dust on top. This will then have a sticky piston facing downwards on the side of it and this will hold our two slime blocks. Now is a good time to place in our anvils. They go on top of this piston arm and we just stack them up until we have seven of them, which is the maximum this contraption can hold. So now we want to build our reset line. And to do that, we come around the back, place an observer on the side of this slime block. In front of that, we place a block with a three tick repeater like that. Then we place two blocks here, then redstone dust, two four tick repeaters like this, and then a block in front. This will have a torch on the side, and then we come around here, place a block on top, a slab on the side of that, and then two redstone dust here. And finally, we place a target block here with a torch on top. This will have a block on top of it, but we need to leave it out because there are certain things we need to do first. Next, we place a sticky piston facing down on the side of this half slab and then a note block on top. Then we come around this way, place two blocks like this, a redstone dust here and then a three tick repeater facing this way. 
Then we place a note block under this redstone dust with a sticky piston on the side facing up. This will hold an observer facing into a 3 tick repeater, like this. On the end of this repeater we place a block with redstone dust on top and then on the side of this we place another block, a redstone torch, another block and then another redstone torch, like this. On top of this torch we place a block and then an observer. On the side of these we place three sticky pistons like this and then an observer and a sticky piston facing upwards. And then finally we place a sticky piston in the back like this. Then we need to go around the back, place a regular piston here facing up and then underneath we place an observer facing down. This will then go into a block with a sticky piston on the side facing up and that will hold an observer. Keep in mind that if your machine ever breaks, this observer should be down and not up like this. Next we want to place a block here, another one on the side of this anvil and then two upside down half slabs like this and then place redstone dust on top of all of them. Then we place a sticky piston facing down like this, holding a redstone block and then on top of that, redstone dust like this. Then we go around the back, place a block on the side, then a note block underneath and a sticky piston facing down with a block on its face. Now we need to make the gnaw latch. So we place a dropper facing down on the side of that top anvil and then another one facing up underneath. Then in the bottom one we place one item. Then we place an upside down half slab here with a comparator facing outwards. This needs to be a half slab so that this redstone dust doesn't power this dropper. So there's just a few steps left that need to be done in a specific order. First, we place a sticky piston on this comparator holding an observer like this. Then we place a sticky piston facing upwards with an anvil on top of this block. Then we need to go around the back and place an observer in this empty gap. And finally, we place an observer on the side of this piston and then a hopper here. This acts as a transparent immovable block. Then we can come underneath here, place this block underneath the dropper and then we get a redstone block and power this dropper. And this will reset the entire system. Then we can break this and test the machine out. So now that it works, there's just a couple of things you need to know. The first thing is that there can't be any blocks in this area next to the slime blocks. This is because if there are any blocks above it, then the slime blocks won't get pulled back by the piston. The second thing is that when you run out of anvils, this thing just becomes a giant clock. And it will not stop until you fill it with anvils again. And there you have it. You've built yourself a fully automatic anvil replacer. If you found this guide useful, then a sub to the channel would be greatly appreciated. As always, you can find the world download in my Discord server, link is in the description, and I'll see you in the next video.